And welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Again, it's awesome to be with Emil again. We had yep. a riveting um, conversation on Eastern spirituality um, in our last episode. Hope you guys yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I really hope it was enjoyable. I enjoyed it. It kind of like I revisited the Eastern spirituality. I did that, you know, mm-hmm. a while ago. Was, um, and just going back through, it just... It re-anchors you in Christianity because you realize yeah. the hope we have in Christianity. Amen. So go back and watch that episode. I think that that yeah. would be beneficial. We're going to um, change tunes a little at the moment. And we're going to talk about something that I think is pretty important in our day and age. We're in a very political day and age right now. Yep. And I actually wanted to talk about, um, or we both wanted to talk about um, Christianity and politics. Yeah. What is the Christian view of politics, how involved we should be, Mm. um, whether we should be ultimately a political people. Um, Mm. These are pretty loaded questions right now Um, because like we're in a pretty political um, period right now. We have, let's say, Beijing and Taiwan. I mean, China and Taiwan conflict, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, Mm -hmm. the Palestine and Israel conflict right Mm -hmm. now. It's blowing up. And yep. Christians and churches and preachers taking sides. are taking sides. Yeah. And they're very political at the moment. Yeah. There are Christians, preachers who are dead set against Israel politically and they're wailing against them. And there are Christians who are on the other side of it who are mm. wailing against the Palestinians and Hamas mm. and saying that Israel is, the, you know, ultimately there's a bit of a theological thing there where Israel is the people of God and we should protect them. So how political should we be here? Um, how political should we be in the Ukraine Russia war? Mm. What's our standard? You know, these are things that we've got to think about. Yeah. Because the answers will affect our day to day lives. Yeah. It will affect the way we witness to people. It will affect the way that we implement changes in our society. So, yeah, I'm going to throw that question over to you. How political do you think we should be as Christians? Ultimately, my view on politics is uh, can be summed up in very few words. If you read Isaiah, where it says um, all politics and everything in, in the nation, and not just the politics, everything in the nation, are like a drop in a bucket to God. Isaiah 40, 15. Yeah. 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 So I, I think that <clears throat> if, if you that's the people, the laws, the the you know the day-to-day happenings, the politics, everything, the politicians themselves, it's just a drop in a bucket mm. to God. So ultimately, it's all in the hands of God. Everything that um, God wills will happen. And he raises them up. And he, ra- he, and he takes them away. Them uh, and that's for the kings and the rulers. Um, yeah. He's the one that puts them in place. He's the one that takes them away. And ultimately, uh, he tells us to pray for our rulers, um, mm. you know, and that we should be praying for our leaders. And not just in the church, in, in the country as well, we should be praying for our leaders, even though we disagree with them. Mm. Um, and I disagree with a lot of the the leadership around the world yeah. from what they're doing yeah but we still pray for them we still um you know well that comes down to the human factor right humans yeah. are sinful they're and sinful. so there's there will be no perfect government <clears throat> in this <clears throat> world never um they can't they can't be because can't of be. human sin and because mm-hmm. of human error we make mistakes our governments are based around an errant mm. errant system so we look at democracy and we think, well, democracy was the greatest thing that ever occurred in human government. Democracy is not necessarily inerrant. It's mm-hmm. probably better than some systems, but it's not the best system. No, it's not. Definitely. Um, theocracy as well. Monarchies, you know, republics. Yeah. Each and every one of those systems had is flawed. Yeah. Um, constitutions are flawed. And so that comes down to the fact that human beings are flawed. Flawed, yeah. Right. So whether you're, um, you know, for this or for that, whether you're Republican, libertarian, mm. um, you know, wh- whatever you are, right, it's flawed. That whatever whatever that system is is flawed. There's yeah. some things in it that, you know, are not going to work mm. because unfortunately it's not perfect, and you'll never find one that's perfect. Uh, and yet we still look and we still try to attach ourselves to a certain political ideology. Yeah. Um, and I disagree with it. That's why for me personally, I don't believe that I am any way leaning towards any side of politics. I, I just I just see whatever is more, um, you know, more 
the, right right for me at that time and more more uh compatible with what the bible teaches at that mm. time mm. and i just go for that i still vote i still you know res- i respect my my country my laws i respect my leadership i i should pray for my leadership more more than i do already i, I admit i don't do it as much as i yeah. need, as i should um and not just for our leadership but also for the leadership of other countries because they do f- affect us nowadays it's not like before yeah it yeah. is like if there's a war in in uh, a certain part of the world it's affecting us because uh fuel prices go up and other things happen and it creates panic and yeah etc yeah. and um and then i i think it's it's important that we pray for other leaders as well in the con- in other countries and hopefully that god can make right whatever is happening whatever injustice is whatever pain is happening well so in saying that you're, you're talking about your personal preference mm-hmm. here i'm apolitical yeah you're apolitical yeah so then what do you think do you think as believers mm. should there be a place for us in the political stream should we be in the political world should if should christians desire to be the prime minister of australia or mm. senators or you know if that's their calling mayors yeah. if that's yeah. what god you know wants for you that's what mm. god what's what your calling is and that's what god wants for you to do um then absolutely uh, as it, long as it does not compromise your christianity your christianity yeah. or the christian doctrine or the, as well. yeah we were talking about this earlier um there's two extremes here mm. the one extreme is what we call theocratic or christian nationalism mm. it's the desire to create government. a Christian government where that Christian government will enforce Christian doctrine and will enforce the Christian ideals on a country. All right? Now, that's enforced. It's not saying mm. that it's founded on Christian principles. It's saying that it's it will enforce. So that's like the hyper-Christian nationalism. Mm. There's something in between where, where Australia and America lived through for you a, know, a few centuries time. where... It was a secular state based on Christian principles, which worked fairly well yeah. um, to a certain extent. Still flawed because obviously we're human beings, right? But the Christian hyper-nationalism is like we're going to enforce the Christian ideals, the Christian doctrine, and they will also enforce doctrines on churches. So the churches have to kind of flow through the same ideals and doctrines of the government. Now, what does that sound very similar to? Sounds similar to the Roman Catholic Empire, right? Yeah, and uh, we know the atrocities that they were committed by that. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm definitely not for that. I, I do believe that the best government we've had so far, as flawed as, as, flawed as it was, and with all its disgusting atrocities as well, was the um, the beginning of the American mm. um government which was yeah. founded on the rights of the people mm-hmm. and how the people are in control of the government and the government d- does not have the power over the people but instead it's serving the people yeah and it's just there as a as a very it was a very libertarian type of yeah structure yeah, yeah. and uh but by the people for, for the, the people, people. Yeah. yeah but and also you know that's why they had the right to bear arms it wasn't to protect themselves from robbers and stuff it was to protect themselves from a tyrannical from government. Tyranny. Yeah, that's yeah. all it was, um, and I and I think that was one of the best governments to have existed. Well, well yeah, for the time, especially for the time. For uh, the time, it wouldn't work. That was actually nowadays, a, a response. That was a response to the tyranny of <clears throat> both the Church of England, England, mm. and the Roman Catholic Church, mm. right? Because historically, they saw the tyranny that forms and that can come about when. You have a centralized government that has complete authority. And we've seen Mm. that through history. We saw that with the Roman Empire, the Greek Empire, the the Assyrian empires, Babylonians. Like when there is a centralized unit of complete authoritative power, you say complete and superior authority will corrupt completely. Yeah, so it's absolute power. Absolute power corrupts. corrupts, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, That's because of human sin, right? Mm Mm-hmm. That doesn't relate to the person of Jesus, though. No. Because when Jesus came, first time he comes in the incarnation, he had a mission, and his mission was spiritual. Yeah. His mission was to release from, in the spiritual sense, from the political power of sin and death 
and evil. So removing that power from Satan and then and then transferring those who believe in him into the kingdom of light. So then we become citizens of heaven. That was his ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. His ultimate goal was not to establish an earthly kingdom at that time. Yeah. That will come in his second coming. So we will have a monarchy, a Christian monarchy, in that Christ is king. Mm -hmm. Right? That will be the ultimate theocracy and that yeah. will be perfect. That was that that would start in the one thousand years. We're we're correct? talking about, you know, we're in eschatology now, but when Christ comes, he will establish his kingdom. We will be citizens of that mm -hmm. kingdom freely. Yeah. Right? Because like here's the thing. The reason that a theocracy will not work a Christian theocracy, why it will not work is because you have people that are inclined towards the evil desires. Mm. And so it's going to be an enforced thing. People are going to be doing things which they do not want to do. Mm. It's like a slavery. Like they're, they're, they're enslaved to do things that are good and righteous and holy. That's not the desire of God. Yeah. It's the desire of God that they would willingly come to a place where they obey. Right. Yeah. God's not someone who's going to to crack the whip on someone who has no desire whatsoever to to be in his realm, to be in his presence. Right. Mm. And so when Christ comes, that part of it, that fleshly part is eliminated. There's no more desire towards evil. So what's our desire towards? It's towards righteousness. So yeah. when he establishes that kingdom. It's going to be a kingdom of peace and harmony and mm -hmm. unity because his subjects are completely loyal to his righteousness, mm -hmm. not to wickedness. And so that's why a Christian, hyper-Christian nationalist ideal will not work because you might have a few, a minority who are willing to do the things of God, but the majority aren't. Mm. So you're going, to have a, you're going to have a lot of defiance. You're going to have yep. a lot of... Um, disquieted people you know they're mm -hmm. going to be people who are angry and they will revolt so it just won't work no which is why we've you know um, the american government in its initial courses even right you know the australian government in its um proceeding of the federation agreed that secular state built on christian principles yeah. works best best yeah <clears throat> it actually like you said before when we were talking um privately it protects the church. It does. It absolutely does. Because we've seen the atrocities that happen in the Roman Catholic Church where <clears throat> they force the churches to believe things that are inherently not biblical mm -hmm. because they conflate the issues. So they conflate what a political issue is with what a religious issue is. They became tyrannical. Yeah. And they'll, they'll say, well, it is a political issue for you to fast and pray mm. and <clears throat> give tithe. alms and tithe, right? So tithe and tax were conflated. So yeah, and it got to the point where um, tithing and even your salvation became kind of interwoven, and I yeah. think that's where the Reformation kind of started. And um, you know, when, yeah, yeah uh, with Martin so, Luther. Yeah. yeah. So, you okay? <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I'm gonna go get some water. Keep talking. Sure. <laughs> so, um, yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, I, I think that, we, as we were saying, um, for us as Christians, for us to have a strong political stance one way or the other, we have to kind of look to what Christ would want in, in, in our views, whether it's political or otherwise. Would God be happy with what your political beliefs are um is god going to be okay with that and if if we look at if we look at what we believe our political uh beliefs and we say well this isn't really that compatible with what jesus teaches then maybe maybe there's something fundamentally wrong with with our idea of what it means to be a christian maybe maybe we shouldn't be putting our politics ahead of christ maybe we should be putting christ as the number one figurehead in our life and everything else falls underneath yeah our political beliefs our personal beliefs our wants and needs is beneath christ always yeah and especially our political it's, it's not it's not especially when when it causes so much division in families and in churches 
why like for example the the vaccine thing with that happened recently i saw so many churches being divided oh if yeah. you have this vaccine you can't come to church uh, because you're a sinner or whatever you got the mark of the beast and then yeah. the other way around where it's like oh if you haven't got the vaccine you can't you're come to working. church like yeah. you're what are you you're yeah. illogical you're this and that like it's so ridiculous that something as stupid as a vaccine vaccine cause a division and a mm. divide in the church or, or the mask mandates or stuff like like guys this is so so beneath us yeah. as christians yeah. it's it's like the devil's not even trying and we're just like yeah let's do it for him come yeah. on that's it's that's stupid. that's one of the issues with politics it's yeah. polarizing <clears throat> you know it it takes people who are supposed to be united mm. it divides them and it's a tactic of the enemy it is. He's the enemy. It's will, useful. Will use it to divide a people who, when united, are a threat to him. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And 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 look look at what happened to the church. It's so fragmented. Like we've got so many denominations now. When before it was just one main church. It was just the church. Yeah. And now we've got so many denominations. And do you think this was from God? Like in all honesty, ask yourself. Was this from God? Is this what God wants? Just a, a fragmented church that's just spread out and all the like arguing over small little things that are inconsequential. It's like, look at the big picture. Look at what's important. Let's prioritize. Let's yeah. put politics aside. Let's put our wants and needs aside and put Christ in the forefront. Yeah. Is Christ happy with us? Is Christ happy with the church? Mm. Is Christ happy with your, your ideologies and your beliefs? And I think most of the churches and most people will say, no, maybe we have this and this and that to improve. Let's do it. What do you think? Yeah. No, I believe, so ultimately our, our goal as the church is the preaching of the gospel. Mm -hmm. It is the reformation and the revival of society based on the preaching of the gospel. Amen. So ultimately it's not going to come through a political sphere. Nope. However, in saying that, our approach to politics or our decisions, the decisions we make politically, can have an effect on the society as mm -hmm. well. So it's kind of like it's not the ultimate priority, but it is should so we important. should we then, you know, completely disown no. the whole concept no, 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 of no. politics. There are Christians who they just don't vote at all because they don't want to be involved in that the political realm at all. But part of what Christ speaks about and not just Christ but even Paul in his epistles um, obviously the words <clears throat> of Christ but part of that is when you talk about praying for your kings mm. or queens and in our context rulers, it's whatever. our rulers right mm. our authorities part of that praying is being very prayerful about the system mm. we have a democratic system we have a system that is based on us voting and making decisions based on there should be an element of prayer there Amen. And we are praying and we look at policies and we say, all right, which of these policies is antithetical to the gospel and which is for the gospel? Like, for example, there was a, you know, there are certain referendums or there are certain votes about whether um, there should be prayers in schools. Right. Mm. Now, that ultimately affects the spiritual quality of the education oh, yeah. system and the young, those who are young. So. If a Christian is faced with a vote, should Christ, uh, should students be able to or pray. free to pray in schools? We should be voting yes. Of and course. praying for that. And praying for that. That's mm. that's a beautiful thing. That's something that will disciple them into a relationship with Christ. Amen. That's the, the goal, Amen. right? Um, so we look at certain policies and we're like, is it... <clears throat> in accordance with the gospel, is it in accordance with the word, or is it antithetical? Yeah, amen. Yeah. Um, one of the some of the big political issues right now, abortion. Mm -hmm. Right, is abortion compatible with the gospel? Um, the process of homosexual marriage. Mm -hmm. Right, those things have already passed in Australia. Yeah. So we have abortion and we have homosexual marriage. Yeah. Now that affects the society. It does. And because the society has been affected, that's also penetrated the church. Yeah. Right? A lot of churches have caved in. They now promote abortion and they now promote homosexual leadership. Right? Yeah. I, so, I, th I, think, I think it's a very slippery, um, slippery slope. Slippery slope, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, it's there's a very fine line between being being respectful and um, obeying the government mm. and going against Christ. Yeah. Uh, for example, if I was in a church leadership position, I'll ask you the same question. Mm -hmm. And I was put in a position where someone in my church uh, wanted to marry their partner and they were a same-sex couple. Mm-hmm. And they wanted me to marry them. I personally would not. Yeah, well, the biblical standard is that's not a marriage. No. Yeah. So it's not something I can do in good conscience do to them. In fact, I would go a step further and I would explain to them why. Mm -hmm. In great detail, with mm -hmm. respect and love, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm not there to hurt someone. I'm there to help them, you know. You're there to disciple them. Yes. To bring them to Christ. To Christ. Amen. Part That's of, my main goal. Yeah. That's my number one priority. Mm. Their happiness is not in there. That's not, that's not, it's not there. It's not, it's not the top priority. Of course, I want them to be happy, but if it means them dying mm. forever in mm. eternal death or them being happy, I'd rather they be sad and have an eternal life yeah. than be happy on earth. And that's the happiest they'll ever be because mm. it's not going to get better. Trust me. It's going to get a lot worse. I don't want that for them. I want them, I'd rather them have their best life later, not now. Yeah, like physical happiness, meaning eternal destruction, which one's better? Right? Yeah, it's 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 a no-brainer. Yeah. But they don't see that. They just yeah. see their momentary pain. So we're, we're talking here about when certain political issues, it, it seeps over and it pours over into theological issues yeah. as well there. Because there are there are policies that are being made by governments because they're flawed and because they're humans and because they're ultimately sinful as well mm -hmm. there are policies being created right now that are pushing people or pushing the society further away from god mm -hmm. right so when you have a secular government that is established on biblical principles it kind of anchors the government to continue in a place that kind of glorifies god right what they're trying to do is they're trying to strip away those foundational stuff. Yeah. So they want to say that our foundation is not based on Christian principles anymore. We are not just secular, but we are naturalistic, right? There's a danger in that as well. There is. And so Christians should pray for the Absolutely. government. And also, I do believe there's a, a place where Christians can be a voice and influence governments and influence, influence officials. We have like pastors who... Um, are taken out for dinner by politicians and praying for them and speaking to them and speaking to them about these issues. I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't but either. as long as they don't conflate the political issues with the religious, yeah. that's where the danger lies. Because knowing their place, knowing their place. If yeah. you're a pastor, you're a pastor. You're a pastor. You're there to disciple. And if in God's sovereignty, because look, we remember this: it is God who places governments, who pulls them down. Mm. Ultimately, it is God who is going to allow a government to take place. Or to topple it. Or to topple it. And so it's not like there's this hopelessness in it. Sometimes it's a judgment on the people. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a judgment on the church. Like he approves wicked governments. Because we chose it. Because we chose it. Because we've been emasculated. Yeah. We've been weak. We've been choosing not to, to fulfill our role as believers, as the church. In that case, we need to pray and repent ourselves and then pray for our governments. Absolutely. Right? And, and pray then, for the people that are victims of that government that are Christian and mm -hmm. they did not vote for that government and they don't want that government. Yeah. We um, have to pray for those people as well because yeah. unfortunately, they don't have a voice there sometimes. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you have, for example, the North Korean government, mm -hmm. which is a dictatorship in the sense that... There's no choice. There's no choice. You don't have a choice here... Um, you can't practice your religion. You can't practice your 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 um, Christian lifestyle. You know, obviously we have Christians who do, and they're persecuted for it and they're yep. executed for it. Um, so those Christians, they are praying for their government, and they're praying to God and they're asking God for wisdom as to how to deal with those yeah. things. But ultimately, the first thing, and we know, we have a lot of Korean people um, within the body of Christ who their ultimate goal and their ultimate responsibility is to Christ and Amen. to be his disciples. Amen. So they're still doing, they're still preaching the word. Yeah. They obviously have to be a lot more 
I don't like to use the word crafty, but wise <laughs> in yeah. the way that they do it. Yeah. Um, same with Christians in Saudi Arabia or in Islamic countries. So we see the way that the political landscape can affect the way Christians live out their lives. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it shouldn't make too much of a difference. You should still be a Christian first. Absolutely. That's your priority. Yeah. Priority number one. Where we're ultimately, we are first citizens of heaven mm. and second citizens of this earth, yeah. right? So we're and not of this world. We're not we're of not. this world. Yeah. You know, our citizenship here is temporary. Our citizenship mm -hmm. with Christ is eternal. Yeah. Um, and I was going to say as well, like in, in saying that, like, there's a there's a balance between the yes. two extremes. You're still in the world, though. You're still in the world here. We still make our choices. <clears throat> we still pray. We still review policies, and mm. we make sure that we're aligning those policies in our decisions yeah. on what God's word says about that. Yeah. Um, like the whole vote yes or no to gay marriage thing. There were a lot of Christians that voted yes because their the theology and doctrines were off, and they believe that the Bible itself is something that needs to be kind of updated, mm -hmm. right? See, that's a theological issue that they've kind of merged in and conflated with a political one. Yeah. So they've made a theological decision yeah. and their political choice has been morphed towards was it. Morphed towards it. So there's de there are definitely issues here mm. that are important. Um, like we said, Christ says his kingdom is not of this world. But we are living in the world. Amen. If he wanted a Christian government that was going to enforce a theocracy, he would have left the constitution the same way that he left the constitution for the people of Israel in, in ancient Israel, mm. um, which was a theocratic monarchy. So he would have done that. He would have left that constitution for them. I mean, he warned them us. against it to yeah. begin with. You know, they yeah. wanted the king. He's like, yeah. oh, you shouldn't have kings. This is what's yeah. going to happen. They're like, yeah, we still want a king. Okay. So... We've seen the toppling and the bringing in of new governments and new yeah. kings and, and whatnot throughout history. But ultimately, our eyes need to be on the King of Kings. Amen. He is, he is the sole focus here. And so when we talk about politics, we need to have a balanced view. If you have a desire to be in politics, to, have, to be a Christian voice in politics, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Pray. And ask God for wisdom there, mm -hmm. but you need a lot of wisdom lot because of wisdom. you need not to be drawn into the deception and the corruption that is so often associated with that career. And there yeah. is. It's, it's not one big thing. It's just a lot of yeses. Yeah. Just a lot yeah. of yes, I will do this. Yes, I will do that. Yes, I will yeah. do that. And it just keeps, you know, getting you closer and closer to the wrong path. It's not just a one decision. It's it's many multiple wrong decisions. Yeah. And they're small ones, but they eventually, you'll look at yourself and you're so far away from where you should have been. Yeah. Um, so I, I do pray that uh, we pray for those people that are already in, in politics and the, our brothers and sisters in Christ who want to be part of politics. We should be praying for them. And um, also for the ones that are not our brothers and sisters in Christ, but in humanity, we should be praying for them too. Mm. Um, we shouldn't exclude them because they have differing views politically or otherwise. Um, they're still our brothers and sisters in Christ. There's still hope for them as long as they mm. breathe for them to come to Christ. And that's what we should be praying for uh, ultimately. And that should be, um, because that's what the message is, is just to spread the good message yeah. to everyone so that they know um, who Christ is and what he's done for them and how good he is and what his love is and, yeah, and what it means to accept him as their Lord and Savior, and trust me, I wouldn't wish hell on anyone. It's it's not something that's it, it's not something that I'd want for anyone. Literally, mm -hmm. anyone that's ever existed or ever will exist, regardless of how I feel about yeah. that person. It's not something I'd wish on anyone. Mm -hmm. I wish everyone could go to heaven, but unfortunately, that's not the case. We know that as Christians, so we should be praying for people. Yeah. Yeah, we pray for people, pray for governments. Amen. And if you can pray for a government to have a, a more objective view towards who God is and what mm -hmm. God says, that can be very beneficial to society. 100%. But in the same way, it's very beneficial as well. When there's persecution, Christians become stronger ultimately. Yeah. So um, there's kind of those two, two aspects of it. So we pray and ultimately we trust in God's sovereignty. Amen. But our ultimate allegiance and responsibility is to, to the Christ. gospel, yep. is to Christ. And we do our job nonetheless, no matter what. Amen.
Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Great to have you again. And yeah, keep tuned. Take care. Like and subscribe so that we get some more cool content like this. Please do. See you guys.